implementing CSP is basically just implementing an HTTP response header. It's a little bit more complicated of a header than most other security headers, but follows the same structure. We have the name of the header and then the value of the header. So the name of the header is always going to be content-security-policy. And between the header and the value, there will be a colon, just the same as any other HTTP response header. The value of the header is the policies. The policy can be broken up into multiple directives, and there's a lot of different kinds of directives. The directives are specified one after the another, and they're separated by a semicolon. And there can be a dozen or more directives in a single content security policy. An example of a content security policy can be as simple as creating a string that has the policy in it and then generating a header from this string. So in this example from PHP in the red box, we have the entire content security policy, including the name of the header followed by the colon, and then the value of the policy. It's written with one directive on each line, and those lines are concatenated together into a long string. But there's no particular reason it has to be coded this way. In this application, each directive was put onto its own line just to make the code easier to read. The directives come from one of several different categories. Some categories block input coming into the application. The most popular of these is the fetch policies. And these have something in common. They all specify valid locations where code or features can originate from, and anything else that isn't on this whitelist is blocked. There's also navigation policies, which decide to where the user can be directed from the current application, and document policies that cover documents. There are other categories of directives as well. One of the most important is the reporting policies category. And these policies allow the browser to send a message back to the development team to alert them if one of the policies was triggered. The directives themselves are also name value pairs. There's the name of the policy, which is always going to be a static value. And then there's the value of the policy. These can be specified singularly, or you can chain them together. And they're going to be space delimited. The values of the directives are going to be the sources that are allowed to include that feature. So if we look at the script source directive as an example, we see this particular example has two sources where scripts are allowed to come from. There's self, which indicates from the application itself, in other words, on the same page or in the same application, and then we also say example.com. Now, the self policies are from the point of view of same origin. So it's essentially the domain name of the application. Now, technically, there's more to same origin than domain name. But in practical use, websites run over a single protocol, HTTPS, also known as the scheme. And they run on whatever port they're going to run on. And that's typically 443, and that doesn't really vary much. So although there are technically three aspects of same origin policy, the one that really matters is the domain name. The self is one of these special meta sources. And there are others like none, which means 
no one is allowed to include this functionality. And then there's the nonce and the digest, which are code markers for legacy code that's allowed to run as well. Otherwise, we're going to be specifying a URL. Now, the no wants and digest policies in particular are going to be seen tagging legacy code. And the no wants will be a number. It's a long random number. It has to be a cryptographically secure random number. And it's generated with each request. So if you refresh the page over and over again, you'll see that number change with every response. Digest, on the other hand, doesn't change. Digest is where a hash of the code that's included on the page is taken, and the value of that hash is used as the tag. And since the code itself is not changing from request to request, the value of the hash isn't going to change either. And so that value will be static for a given visit to an application for the most part. In the next section, we'll start to take a look at some of the directives as examples for illustration of how content security policy works.